Well, good morning and welcome back to the Ways and Means Committee. This is Chair Rena Moran. Pursuit to House Rule 10.01, I call this remote meeting of the House Ways and Means Committee for February the 21st, 2022 to order. Ms. Sparkman, please take the roll for attendance. Chair Moran. Present. Moran, present. Vice Chair Olson, excused. Representative Garofalo. Present. Garofalo, present. Representative Albright. Representative Albright. Representative Becker Finn. Present. Becker Finn, present. Representative Bernardi. Present. Bernardi, present. Representative Eklund. Present. Eklund, present. Representative Hansen. Present. Hansen, present. Representative Hassan. Representative Hassan. Hassan, present. Hassan, present. Representative Hurtas. Representative Hurtas. Hurtas, present. Hurtas, present. Representative Hornstein. Hornstein, present. Hornstein, present. Representative Johnson. Present. Johnson, present. Representative Kresha. Kresha, present. Kresha, present. Representative Liebling. Present. Liebling, present. Representative Lilly. Representative Lilly. Representative Mariani. Representative Mariani. Representative Marquart. Marquart, present. Marquart, present. Representative Miller. Miller, present. Miller, present. Representative Nash. Nash, present. Nash, present. Representative Nelson. Nelson, present. Nelson, present. Representative Noor. Noor, present. Noor, present. Representative O'Neill. O'Neill, present. O'Neill, present. Representative Pulowski. Pulowski, present. Pulowski, present. Representative Petersburg. Petersburg, present. Petersburg, present. Representative Pinto. Present. Pinto, present. Representative Schumacher. Schumacher, present. Schumacher, present. Representative Schultz. Present. Schultz, present. Representative Scott. Present. Scott, present. Representative Sundin. Present. Sundin, present. Representative Albright. Present. Albright, present. Representative Lilly. Representative Mariani. That concludes the role. There is a quorum present. Great. So a quorum is present. Our next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our hearing on February the 7th. Minutes were included in the hearing documents emailed to you by committee staff. Are there any questions or corrections on the minutes? If not, the chair will entertain a motion to approve. Representative uh, uh, Liebling, would you like to move the uh, minutes? That's so moved. Representative Liebling, Liebling moves approval of the minutes for February the 7th, 2022. Please unmute briefly for a voice vote. All in favor of approving the minutes say aye. 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 All opposed? The motion prevails and the minutes are approved. All right, so members, we have two bills on the agenda for today. Um, the first bill up is House File 2900. It has made stops in a number of committees before the tax committee referred it to us. The chair will move that House File 2900 be recommended for placement on the general register. Representative Fraser, welcome to the committee. Um, I, good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. I understand that you have an author's amendment. I do, Madam Chair. Okay, so why don't we get the bill in shape before you do your presentation? So the chair would move um, H2900A9, uh, 
Uh, Representative Fraser, could you explain the amendment? Madam Chair, thank you. The, this is, these are some minor tweaks. Uh, there was a DH, DHS um, technical issue that needed to be addressed, and then there's another appropriation issue uh, from deed uh, that need that uh, they were able to absorb some amounts that were originally noted in the appropriations uh, for the original bill. All right. Is there any questions on the A9 amendments? Seeing no further questions or no questions at all. The A9 amendment is before us. Please unmute your microphone. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. The motion prevails and the A9 amendment is adopted. Representative Fraser, please tell us about your bill as amended with a focus on the fiscal components of your bill. Madam Chair, thank you. Um, the bill as amendment. Well, first of all, I just want to say this bill has been a long time coming, and we vitally need to show appreciation and support and honor our frontline workers. Uh, being that this committee only deals with the appropriation pieces, uh, I do have staff here to, to walk through what the appropriation amounts are, and I'll let them do that. Uh, but overall, this bill is uh, we're proposing and asking for an allocation of $1 billion for our frontline workers. We've identified over 770,000 workers. The $1 billion represents the amount that we believe uh, would go to the workers that would apply, and that is based on attrition rates and individuals that just would not apply for this based on our conversations with the departments that will be handling the um, allocation and the output of the of the amounts. So that's uh, one billion amount represents 667,000 workers that we believe will apply and be eligible for the resources in this bill. Okay. Um, Ms. Adrian, do you have anything else to add to that? Good morning. Sorry, Madam Chair, it took me a minute there to unmute. Um, I, I think um, Representative Fraser did a good job of explaining what the amendment changes. So um, I'll just clarify. So the appropriations that were in the second engrossment of the House file remain the same, with the exception of there was a $215,000 um, appropriation for deed. And in, through the fiscal note process, the deed um, updated their needs, and it was closer to $8,000 that they thought they would need, and they suggested that they can just absorb that cost because it, it was so low. So um, that's the only change that, the, that would be reflected in the amendment for the appropriations. Okay, thank you so much for that. Uh, members, are there any questions? And for some reason, I cannot see my chat box. Uh, so um, maybe if you can raise your hand if you have a question. Okay, uh, Representative Scott. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Are we on the entire bill or what are we, are you asking for questions on the entire bill right now, Madam Chair? Yes, I am, uh, Representative okay. Scott. Okay, thank you. I just want to clarify that. So, you know, I have several problems with this bill, but um, Representative Frazier, I do have a question for you. Um, do you think it's important to have transparency when you're spending a billion dollars? Representative Frazier. Thank you, Madam Chair, Representative Scott. I, I do think that's important. I think well, we had this conversation in the last committee that uh, you were in. Yeah. Um, Representative sure. Scott. Thank you. In the last committee, you indicated that you thought the suggested changes I made in amendments that went down that you thought those are probably good changes to make, but I still have not heard anything from you. So I would like to know what your plan is for transparency in this bill. Um, for members that are obviously not on the Judiciary Committee, uh, my amendment um, just added language um, on page four, line 15, and now, you know, there's been, a, the, the bill's been amended probably since then, but um, it would just make public the name and the amount of money spent sent to each um, participant in this program. And the precedent for that was the PPP loans, um, where that information was made public, and the 9-11 Commission, when those families received government funds, their names and the amount received were all made public. And I mean, there are other areas of this bill that lack transparency. Um, and but that's the one that um, I have the most concern with at the moment. And, you know, I 
I try to work bipartisanly on these um, data practices issues. Um, I don't bite, <laughs> and um, and um, you know I'm really disappointed, Representative Frazier, that that you didn't address that concern. And um, I, I I think what we don't want is another feeding our futures um, sort of you know catastrophe with something like this that's state run. And if we're going to do something like this, we need to make sure that there's plenty of daylight in it, so that there isn't. <laughs> We don't come back later and find all a sorts of, all sorts of fraud, um, and we want to make sure that the people that you know are supposed to be getting the funds are actually getting them, and not you know others that aren't. So I, I'm really disappointed in that. I don't know if Representative Fraser has a comment to that end, but Madam Chair, I'm just really disappointed. Okay, I didn't really hear a question in that, Representative Scott, but Representative Fraser, would you have any comment? Yes, Madam Chair, I'd love to make a comment to that. Uh, Representative Scott, I am deeply sorry for your frustration and your disappointment. Uh, sorry we haven't had a chance to connect, but I did reach out to Minkoji, who supported um, your amendment, and I'm going to be speaking with them this week. Um, if there's a change that we can make around this, I want to make that change. So I'm going to be speaking with Minkoji to work on what that possible language could be, taking into consideration the language you put. But I will say there is currently a required report within this bill that requires uh, that will re that is required to report out the amounts that are paid out by county and by sector. It's in the aggregate. It doesn't identify the individuals um, per se. But I will say the examples that you gave and the ones that came from Nkoji, those are about corporations, not individuals. So that's the conversation I want to have with Nkoji. And I will have that conversation before this bill is finally done. Representative Scott. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, uh, Representative Frazier, I'm glad to hear you say that. And um, I hope that we can get this taken care of. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Scott. Uh, do we have um, any other questions? I see Representative Pinto, Madam Chair, if you can't see folks. Yes, thank you. Representative Pinto. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is, um, I'll just raise this. I'm not sure if it's, because uh, this may be a question that's kind of more for Representative Scott, but just following up on that, I don't know if there was an exception in that amendment for people who are in the safe at home program and have experienced domestic violence um, and may not want to have uh, their name and occupation become public like that. Um, and again, that may be something to follow up separately on, but um, but I'll just recognize you've got a lot of people whose names would be um, would be displayed to the public and I would want to make sure that there'd be protections for people um, in those situations as well. So thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah. Um, very thoughtful, Representative Pinto. Thank you for that. Representative Garofalo. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I can wait until my side of the aisle wraps up. Just make sure there's no one else. Okay. Representative Liebling. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to add another word, if I might, to this discussion about transparency. You know, I, it's really surprising to me uh, that, you know, members, of course, we all are interested in transparency and making sure that we all know where money, public money goes. But there's also a privacy interest here. And usually I'm really surprised at Representative Scott because, you know, usually when we're talking about individuals. Our interest is usually in protecting them and keeping it private. And Representative Pinto's mentioned one particular aspect of this, but we don't we don't let people's tax return uh, information go out to anyone. We don't when someone gets a tax credit, we don't let them be named individually. When landlords get uh, money from the rent help, we don't let their names get published individually. I mean, there are just so many times when we don't do that. So, you know, it's one thing to say we want to make sure money goes. And I think Representative Frazier made a, an important distinction, whether it's corporations or individuals, but this is always a balance to be struck. And when we're talking about thousands of individual people who we don't want to deter them from applying by saying, oh, and by the way, anyone in the world can find out who you are if you get this check for $1,000. I mean, that just seems to me to be way, way off base for a bill like this. So I think that as it is now, personally, I think the bill strikes a good balance, and I would not want to see individuals have their private data exposed um, 
for for a one time check like this. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Liebman. Representative Scott. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. And well, Representative Liebling, we do this all the time for people that receive grants from the government. And you're absolutely right. There's always a delicate balance to be struck um, with, with data, but we do this. I'm not saying an address, I'm saying a name and the amount so that we can verify that people that aren't qualified to get this money are not getting it. I'm perfectly fine making the exception for people in the Safe at Home program. I'm working on a bill regarding Safe at Home right now myself. So uh, there are nuances that can be captured here, but um, this is a billion dollars. Uh, Representative Nash. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And just a commentary, I find, find Representative Liebling's comment just a little, little uh, comical regarding uh, the transparency of your side of the aisle, given the fact that we heard Representative Long's bill last week in state government finance, where he would actually like to have all or the top three donors to any campaign um, listed on his bill for campaign finance reasons. So uh, let's say an individual were to have donated and they were the top donor to you and they were $2,000, their name would become public. So I find that a little bit of a juxtaposition given that on one bill that you're all going to love all over on the floor, and I'm sure you're going to wax rhapsodically about it and how great it is. <laughs> now you're going to be telling us that we shouldn't be publishing the names of certain people. So just some incongruencies I thought I might point out on this fine morning, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Nash. Uh, Representative Becker Fan. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And as the Judiciary Chair and Data Practices Commission Chair wanted to weigh in, since apparently we're going to go deep into the data practices uh, issues around this bill. And I think, you know, it's really important for us to remember there's a difference between public and private. There are different ways that, you know, if, if the idea is that we want some kind of oversight over where the dollars go, there is a middle ground. It ha doesn't have to be um, sort of all or nothing where only the person that um, the data is about, um, you know, it's, <laughs> there's, there's areas of gray in between where I think we could get some of the accountability that folks seem to be looking for without exposing people. Um, to be honest, I mean, the difference between a, a donor and uh, a person receiving the dollars here, you know, the folks we're talking about here um, is power. And these folks where these dollars would be going are not necessarily wealthy people. They are people where this check could mean a lot. And in some ways it may put them at risk where now um, there may be folks targeting them because they know they have funds available. And so I think there, there's a lot to be weighed here and simply making this data public is likely not um, the best choice overall in how we weigh this. You know, every situation is different. We could all come up with examples where, oh, this, we get Gave money to somebody and it was public or we gave money to somebody and it was private um each individual situation really needs to be weighed um the pros and cons and the population we're talking about and um the amount of money going out to each individual all those things need to be weighed against themselves um you know for instance we don't necessarily put the name of every single farmer who receives money from the government. Um, we don't put their personal name um, out there into the, you know, into the Twitterverse and the universe for anybody to access. And so um, I support the bill and I am glad to hear that uh, Representative Frazier continues to work with Minkoji. I think they do a good, that's an organization that does a good job of weighing those things. And um, just want to note that they, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. And there is a middle ground here that I think can, uh, can work, but even as it is, um, you know, erring on the side of protecting an individual's uh, personal name uh, is probably the best best place to be as of right now. Although, you know, we can always we can always make bills better. And I know that Representative Frazier is dedicated to that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Becker fan. Um, Madam Chair, if okay. I if I may just to yes. wrap that up. Representative um, Frazier. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Just in terms of the eligibility process, I mean, you know, DEED and DALI, they're, they're going to be required to make sure that these individuals are eligible. And the amount of money that these folks are getting, it's only up to $1,500. The billion dollar price tag is really because we've been really inclusive in terms of including all of our frontline workers. Yes. Um, Representative Garofalo. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And members, I do think it's important to remember the context in which we're having this debate. Uh, right now, you know, the state of Minnesota is going through a federal investigation of one of the largest uh, exposures of fraud that I've seen in Minnesota state history. $500 million in fraud, money that was meant to provide meals for hungry children was instead spent on trips to Las Vegas, uh, new real estate, uh, even uh, even real estate in Kenya. Those were tax dollars that were meant to help little kids who were hungry. That's how that money's being wasted. The public really doesn't have a lot of tolerance for fraud as they never should be. But given the shadow of those current events, um, I, I do think members would be wise to, to consider that before um, discounting concerns about fraud or abuse. Um, that being said, Madam Chair, there's uh, several problems uh, with this bill. I'm voting no. I would encourage members to vote no as well. Uh, as this bill goes forward, uh, there's going to have to be compromise on a bipartisan basis. This version of the bill does not have that. Um, so whether that takes place before a vote on the House floor or whether it's done with the Senate, uh, it perhaps in a conference committee or an alternate version remains to be seen. Uh, but today, this bill does not merit the support of the House of Representatives. Thank you. I don't, so, thank you. Um, thank you. So uh, before you, uh, before I give you the last words, uh, Representative Frazier, um, I just want us to remind us that, you know, the last two years has been really tough. That the pandemic is real. A lot of folks lost their lives, sick. It's been complicated. And our frontline workers every single day showed up and put in many ways their lives on the line to help save other lives. And uh, we're talking about $1,500, which really isn't a lot of money. The federal government has stepped up and gave all Americans money. I don't know whether the, every dime of that is public, but there's a way of tracing if we need to. You know, and whether the result of that is to make individual um, names public, you know, there's a way. I agree with uh, Chair Becker Finn. There's a way that we can do this without putting exposing, exposing people's name in some type of dollar that they receive from the state for the work that they have stepped up to do every single day over the last two years and that we are still debating about whether they are worthy of it. And so we have time to work this through. We have time to, we're gonna move it to the floor. <clears throat> because as Democrats, we believe that's the right thing to do. And so with that, uh, Representative Frazier, I will give you the last word. Madam Chair, thank you. I, I was just trying to, Representative Garofalo, I'm sorry, I didn't, you kind of cut out at the end. I didn't hear the reasons that you gave for this bill lacking merit to be voted yes for by your, your members. But I can I can follow up with you if that's, if that's okay. I just didn't hear it because you kind of you kind of went out. But but I will say that the concern about this, uh, again, we're comparing, I believe apples to oranges here, we're comparing a corporation or an entity um, that's currently being investigated for alleged fraud now to individual members. And these members are our labor force. These members are our workers. These members are the reason that we are in this position with a 7.7 .7 billion surplus. These members, these individual workers are the reason that our corporations have done so well. Many Minnesota corporations have done so well in the midst of this pandemic. And I think it's, uh, it is time that we honor those members. So I would encourage a yes vote on this. So I think the things that are, the other issues that are raised about data, we can work those out. I'm working with Ming Koji, uh, Representative Scott, I, I think we'll figure that piece out. But, but thank you all and I appreciate you giving me the time this morning to present this bill. Okay, thank you, Representative Fraser. And so with that, I see no further discussion. The chair renews her motion that House File 2900, as amended, be recommended for placement on the general register. Ms. Sparkman, please take the roll. Chair Moran. Uh, aye. Moran, aye. Vice Chair Olson, excused. Representative Garofalo? No. Garofalo, no. Representative Albright? No. 
Albright, no. Representative Becker Finn? Aye. Becker Finn, aye. Representative Bernardi? Aye. Bernardi, aye. Representative Eklund? Aye. Eklund, aye. Representative Hansen? Aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Hassan? Hassan, aye. Hassan, aye. Representative Hurtas? Hurtas, no. Hurtas, no. Representative Hornstein? Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Johnson? No. Johnson, no. Representative Kresha? Kresha, no. Kresha, no. Representative Liebling? Aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lilly? Lilly, aye. Lilly, aye. Representative Mariani? Mariani, aye. Mariani, aye. Representative Marquart? Marquart, aye. Marquart, aye. Representative Miller? Miller, no. Miller, no. Representative Nash? Nash, no. Nash, no. Representative Nelson? Nelson, aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Noor? No, aye. Noor, aye. Representative O'Neill? O'Neill, no. O'Neill, no. Representative Pulowski? Pulowski, aye. Pulowski, aye. Representative Petersburg? Petersburg, no. Petersburg, no. Representative Pinto? Aye. Pinto, aye. Representative Schumacher? Schumacher, no. Schumacher, no. Representative Schultz? Aye. Schultz, aye. Representative Scott? No. Scott, no. Representative Sundin? Aye. Sundin, aye. There are 17 ayes and 11 nays. All right, there have been 17 ayes and 11 nays. The motion prevails in House File 2900 as amended is recommended for placement on the general register. Thank you, Representative Frazier, for your work on this bill. So members, our next bill um, to us come from the Climate and Energy Committee. Representative Long, welcome to the committee. You have House File 2875, a bill dealing with the Prairie Island Net Zero Project. The chair will move that House File 2875 be recommended for placement on the general register. Um, I understand there's a technical authors amendment to get the bill in the shape that you would like to present it. So I will move the uh, H2875A2 amendment for you. Uh, Representative Long, could you explain the amendment? Thank you so much, Madam Chair. So this amendment would get the bill to align with the Senate. Uh, the Senate moved uh, the bill out of their energy committee. Um, and uh, the one change that is different from our bill, and I can explain our bill um, perhaps when we adopt the amendment, is that there is a, an end date uh, put on the appropriation of uh, 2031. All right, thank you. Are there any questions on the A2 amendment? Seeing no further questions, the A2 amendment is before us. Please unmute your microphone. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. The motion prevails and the A2 amendment is adopted. Representative Long, please tell us about your bill as amended with a focus on the fiscal opponent components. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this uh, underlying bill is to make some technical corrections and update deadlines for the Prairie Island Indian Community Net Zero Project, which was a terrific bipartisan bill that we passed uh, last year to move forward a uh, uh, demonstration project for a net zero uh, community uh, uh, for the Prairie Island Indian Community. We had a deadline set of uh, January 1st of this year for uh, the um, for the uh, bids to be accepted. Uh, as we know with, uh, with COVID and with uh, a lot of the circumstances that have been presenting us challenges over the last couple of years, uh, that deadline became impossible to meet. And so uh, Chair Senjum and I sent a joint letter to uh, the Commissioner of Commerce in December, uh, indicating that we were planning to move legislation to move back that deadline um, and asking that the Commissioner of Commerce not enforce that January 1st deadline. So. 
uh, when we brought the bill forward to uh, move that deadline back, we were also made aware from fiscal staff that there were uh, errors in the underlying appropriation that needed to be fixed. And so we decided to go forward with uh, fixing those appropriation errors as well. So this bill would not uh, change the amounts that were appropriated uh, last year that um, we passed with broad support, uh, but it would just make sure that the appropriations are able to be effectuated. All right. So thank you for that explanation, Representative Long. Um, so there are no additional amendments uh, filed for this bill. Are there any questions or comments from committee members? Okay, Representative Garofalo. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and Representative Long. Uh, I'd encourage members on this side of the aisle to support the bill and will become a, uh, an ongoing pattern. We need to help the DFL fix the mistakes they made last year and the bills they passed. So uh, members, I would encourage a yes vote. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Representative Garofalo. Are there any other questions? Okay, there being no further discussion, the chairs. Oh, let me just offer Representative Long the last words. Uh, thank you so much for the support, members. I appreciate it. All right. So there being no further discussion, the chair has renewed her motion that House File 2875, as amended, be recommended for placement on the general register. Ms. Sparkman, please take the roll. Chair Moran. Present. I mean, aye. <laughs> Moran, aye. Vice Chair Olson, excused. Representative Garofalo. Garofalo, aye. Garofalo, aye. Representative Albright. Aye. Albright, aye. Representative Becker Finn. Aye. Becker Finn, aye. Representative Bernardi. Aye. Bernardi, aye. Representative Eklund. Aye. Eklund, aye. Representative Hansen. Aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Hassan. Hassan, aye. Hassan, aye. Representative Hertos. Hertos, aye. Hertos, aye. Representative Hornstein. Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Johnson. Johnson, aye. Johnson, aye. Representative Krisha. Krisha, aye. Krisha, aye. Representative Liebling. Aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lily. Lily, aye. Lily, aye. Representative Mariani. Mariani, aye. Mariani, aye. Representative Marquart. Marquart, aye. Marquart, aye. Representative Miller. Miller Someone aye. needs to mute. Someone needs to mute, please. Miller, aye. Miller, aye. Representative Nash. Nash, aye. Nash, aye. Representative Nelson. Nelson, aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Noor. Noor, aye. Noor, aye. Representative O'Neill. O'Neill, aye. O'Neill, aye. Representative Pulowski. Pulowski, aye. Pulowski, aye. Representative Petersburg. Petersburg, aye. Petersburg, aye. Representative Pinto. Aye. Pinto, aye. Representative Schumacher. Schumacher, aye. Schumacher, aye. Representative Schultz. Schultz, aye. Schultz, aye. Hello. Representative Scott. Aye. Scott, Hello. aye. Aye. Representative Sundin. I am sorry about aye. that. Sundin, aye. There are 28 ayes and zero nays. Awesome. So there have been 28 ayes and zero nays. The motion prevails. House file 2875 as amended is recommended for placement on the general register. Thank you, Representative Long. So members, that concludes our business for the day. Due to the release of the February forecast Monday morning, I don't think that we will meet at our regular scheduled time next week. But please keep your eyes on your inboxes for updates. If we do not meet next week, I don't want to miss the opportunity to thank our committee legislative assistant, Laura Sparkman. I'm losing Laura for her excellent work. She will be leaving us at the beginning of next month to start a wonderful new adventure with her husband. And I want to make sure that we thank her for her service. Thank you, Laura. You will be missed, but 
We wish you all the best. I wish you all the best. We wish you all the best. And with that, we are adjourned. 